right, well, I think we will go ahead and get started. Welcome, thank you for attending. I appreciate it. Um, is somebody else coming in? No, okay. Um, as you can see, this is the curriculum training, so um, I'm gonna find out from each of you in just a second not only who you are, but what level of experience you have with curriculum because that will kind of direct where I'm headed from here. It's gonna be a pretty basic training, but we can take it to the next level if we need to. Um, I, again, I'm Jane Matthews. I'm from Berkeley City College. Uh, for the past nine years, I've been the curriculum chair there. Uh, I am no longer, but in order to help out all the colleges, um, I'm still working with curriculum uh, because I've had a lot of experience with curriculum in the last few years. been very involved in getting it set up. Your curriculum chair at your individual college will be your primary contact, but if you're ever really stuck, uh, you, know, you can always email me and I'll see if I can help you out, uh, at least for a little while, at least for the rest of the school year, um, this semester and next semester. This is the website. I just, I, I, you might want to either copy it down or you can go ahead and log into Moodle and, or into one of the, uh, I always use, not Moodle, I'm sorry. <laughs> I always use Firefox, but um, you can use whatever search engine. This should work in all search engines. Uh, it might look a little different in some. But this is the website, curriculumnet.com, and it's really important to put slash PCCD because if you just put curriculumnet.com, you end up in San Diego somewhere. It should look like this when you first log in, or when you haven't logged in yet, actually. And if you've used this at all, your username is your first initial and your last name. That's your username. And if you haven't used this yet, you might already have an ID. So try, because you are all supposed to be set up with one. If you've never used it, your, your ID currently, or your password, I should say, is currently change me, all one word. Change me, all one word, with no uh, capital letters, all small. And once you're in, and I'm actually going to log out as the super user and log in as myself. You can log in with your own college. My, it, the, the information is all the same in each one. It's just a different color, um, and it's personalized to you. So like mine, as you can see up here, is kind of that turquoise color that Berkeley has. If you're from Laney, it'll be that, that weird green. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's not weird. <laughs> it'll be the lime green color, and College of Alameda is blue, I think, and Merritt is blue also. So, um, what, so this is the home screen. It would be nice if this were just a little bigger. Maybe I can do one more thing with it. Ha ha. The magic of computers. <laughs> um, this is your, the home page, and I'd like to kind of go through this just for a minute so you can see what it can do before we actually start looking at one particular course. And we still have 45 minutes, so we have lots of time. Um, and I can stay a little later. Well, not too late, but I can stay a little later if we need to, to talk one-on-one. -on -one. Um, those of you who just got IDs, you don't have to do this right now, but at some point you want to go into the personal information right here. And when you go in there, you can change your password to something that's personal. Okay, you don't have to do that right this minute. But this, this left column over here is the, the main menu that you'll be working with. Um, every, and it comes up every time. Uh, <coughs> Um, we'll eventually go in and build a course in a minute and we'll talk about tracking. But the first thing I want you to be able to do is to understand that you can go in here and search any program or course in the Peralta system. So um, if you go into search course, you're going to see your college will come up first uh, that you've already linked into or you can look at the whole district. Um, and you can either pick all of them just the active ones or anything that's pending. Um, usually you'll look mostly at just active, uh, especially when you're just doing research, which is kind of what we're doing here. I'm sorry, oh, I'm sorry. How do you find search course on the left. Okay, well, that's all right. Let me go back. There. Okay, down here at the bottom, search course. Got it? Oh, yeah, back to the post. Okay. Okay. If you ever get lost, go back to home and you can start again. Um, you, then you can look at a course. So um, you, I would suggest you pick a course that's in your discipline at your college. Um, I'm a business instructor, so I'll do that. Um, and you put in a course number, or you can look at all the business courses. But you're probably going to be, when you're uh, 
editing courses, if you're going to be updating existing courses, you'll, you can go in and look at it this way. And if you, when you go in, you can see that even just searching that course, you have a lot of information. The WR is the course outline. WR stands for written record, I think. We didn't make up that code. And when you look at it, this is the old, this looks just like our old course outlines before we went on to Curriculum. And you can print this out. Um, you can't edit it in this format. But you can print it out and see, well, what's the current course outline for this, for this, I, this one, it happens to be very current because we're updating ours at Berkeley also. Um, so in order to get that, you just click on the WR icon. If your courses happen to be offered by distance education, you can click on the DE, mine's going to be blank because this course isn't distance education. But you still get a, you get a blank form. Hello, there it is. But you can see there's no information in it, no student enrollment, no need. Um, but that's what DE stands for. The CI stands is something you'll never use. <laughs> um, I, I, in fact, if, it, if we weren't afraid it would mess up the whole system, we'd ask them just to remove it. Uh, the course compare, the CC, if you um, wanted to look and see what changes were made from the, the last time this course was updated, and you'll be able to see it on the one that I'm pulling up because I just updated it, I think. Yeah. Um, this course outline is current as of 10 8 2012, but the it was four years ago when it was last updated. So even curriculum chairs don't keep their course outlines very updated. Uh, um, and the red numbers are the old information, and the green numbers is the information that I changed to make it more current. And when I updated this, one of the reasons I updated it is because we developed a new degree that I added. We did also, I updated the performance objectives. Um, I updated the course content. So I really did a thorough updating. If you're going to be updating your own course out, existing course outlines, one of the most critical things you want to update is the text and reading materials. And you'll see how to do that shortly. Um, yes? What if you don't have the CC in there in the action area? It means that that course has never been updated since it was put in curriculum. <laughs> so that was a valid question. <laughs> Oh, from the beginning. Okay. Okay. But um, every four or five years, they still have to be updated anyway. So, um, so next time, you'll have a CC. The SR are the SLOs. So it's the SLO report, SR. <laughs> and when you click on that, yay, you'll see the SLOs. If you have put them in, if you haven't put them in, this will come up blank. Um, when you update a course outline, you do need to make sure the SLOs are in here. Um, we're also using a program called TaskStream, but I'm, I'm not, I don't use TaskStream personally. We have someone else in the business department that works on that. And so um, TaskStream also has the SLOs in it. They're supposed to be the same. Um, but TaskStream also tracks the assessment process. It tracks when you evaluate the courses. And Curriculum is strictly we put in the initial SLOs, we keep them updated here. There's no assessment process that's put in the curriculum. Um, if we had about $30,000 to spend on this program right now, we would have all, everything in one program. But for now, we're using two. Um, the FC is a fee-based course. Most, there, most of these are going to be blank. There are no fee-based fee courses. Uh, are numbered with an 800 number. They're like 810 or 848 or something. They're an 800 number. Um, this will be blank unless you have an 800 number. And this little icon says you can copy this course. But, this isn't, but you don't want to copy this course. If you're going to update it, don't copy it from this window. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do that. For now, we're just looking at search course. We're just looking at what information is available. So if I went back to search course one other quick time, I could go in and I could look at the district and I could look at all um, art four courses. I think we have art four everywhere. Ah, yeah. And so now I can see not only Berkeley City College's art four, but Merritt's and Laney's and all the active ones. And so this is an important thing to see. When you're looking at all courses, you're going to see red courses, and they're the active courses. They're the most current outline. You're going to see some green ones which say launched, and that means that they're in the process of being revised right now. 
You're also going to see some purple ones that say pending. Those are the ones that you've started working on, or in this case, um, Michael Cookingham has, has started working on, but isn't in the workflow to the curriculum committee yet. It's just being worked on. And then, let's see if there's, yeah. I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am? It means that you're working on it, or whoever owns that course is working on it. Yes, yeah. And it had, but, but you're still working on it, and it hasn't been submitted to the curriculum committee yet. Okay. <coughs> it also tells you, is this course, um, now the ones that say Peralta, Peralta, that means it was put in originally by Curriculet. <laughs> okay, and the ones that say, have a name on them, like this one says Jenny Brahman, that's the person who's currently responsible for that course outline. And it doesn't matter if Jenny Brahman leaves in a year, um, she's the one that entered this version of this course. And the next time someone else, whoever updates it the next time will have their name on it. And the green color means? Say it again. The green color, the green color means it's launched. So the, the, um, you, can, you can look at the color and then look at whether the red is active, green is launched, and purple is pending. And if there happen to be historical ones, which means that they're old outlines, but they're just in here for record keeping purposes, they're usually, they're blue. And it, you know, the color is there to make them easier to see. Um, and, it, and they didn't, they were all one color at one time and we used to go kind of crazy. The other thing that it'll tell is um, that this one, for instance, this Merit College Art Four, is currently, this, one that's pending says um, Mer MC Merritt College course changes in catalog information. So that means this one's being updated and it's being updated not just with um, the textbooks which aren't in the catalog but maybe they're updating the course description or they're updating anything that pu is published in the, in the catalog itself. So there's two workflows. If you're just updating text textbooks and maybe even performance objectives and even SLOs, um, that's a non-catalog change. If you're updating anything that is actually published in the catalog every two years, which would be pretty much number, you can just look in the catalog and see, but it's number, course title, course description. Um, those things uh, take a different workflow. They require more review. Okay, so that's what you can see in course search. You can also look for programs. You're going to see some of the same things. Um, I'll just look again at the Berkeley City College, and we'll just look at, well, we're looking at art, so we'll look at art. So I'm going to look at all the active, look at all Berkeley City College art programs. So these are the degrees and certificates. These, unfortunately, are not color-coded, um, but you can, you can see how it's easier when they're color-coded. But um, we've asked for that change. Again, the WR means the written record. And so when you click that, you can see, again, this is what's in the catalog, but this is the program of study required to get this Art AA degree at Berkeley City College. And you can do the same if you have a graphic arts degree, if you have a PE degree of some sort, uh, if you have a Spanish degree at your, at your college, you can, you can find it um, by looking that up. And it shows the, the, the units, and it shows, in this case, we've added which courses are offered which semester, and whether you're uh, curriculum committee wants you to do that or not, it's up to you. Um, but it does show, just like in the catalog, choose three units from each list list, take all of these and choose six units from this list in order to get your AA. So you can, you can do that search as well. How do you get to that page? Um, when you're in curriculum at home, uh -huh. at the bottom under search program. Okay. okay? The Curriculet system currently has 70 of the 115 California community colleges and every a bunch of colleges, I don't know how many, in Illinois and some colleges in Dubai. <laughs> and so you're going to get to look at a lot of different courses if you want. Um, you do, can do keyword search. Um, we're just gonna, I'm just going to pick a keyword search course and I'm going to put in um, that I'm looking for a business communications course. I'm updating mine right now. Or you could go in here if you were going to uh, develop a brand new course 
um, like in the, in the PE program. Um, they're developing kinesiology programs and courses. Um, you could go in and say, I wonder if there are any other kinesiology courses in the district so then you, or in the, in the system. So then you come in here, and so I did business communications, and you can see that there's lots of community college courses that identify as business communications. And in order, if you go over to the side, it says more. So I'll just look at this first one, Modesto Junior College. And it comes up and it says, oh, here's the description for that course at Modesto Junior College. Gee, maybe I'll take some of that and put it in mine. And have you used Cricunet before? Not at all. OK. So I'll, you're going to have to watch for just a couple minutes, and then we'll get you set up. Um, then the outline, this tells, shows me what Modesto Junior College's course outline has. And I could use some of their ideas. I don't have to use all their ideas. But it gives me another resource to create a new course or to make mine better. So that's kind of a nice thing. They're, all the course outlines are going to look different, though, because our course, every college has their own format. Go ahead, Christine. Um, are there any mock um, courses where you make a change and then you tweak the system? The our courses are uh, the, the public view of our courses, which is what would be in here, uh, are the only the active course. And since active course outlines are public documents in the community college system, that's why they show. Um, but, but, they, but I can't go in and start changing things on someone else. No, 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 no. This is strictly read only. Okay. Yes? And another question. Save that? Uh, yeah, you can cut print it out, save it as a PDF. Go ahead. In, uh, in the program part. Yes, of uh, search, or uh, where we are right yeah, now. Yeah, we went the home down to search program. Yes. I, it has your program listed. Uh, if you deactivate uh, a course uh -huh. that's in that list, will it automatically remove it from? From the program? It does remove it from the program, or it will tell you you can't deactivate it because it's in a program. So the system is sophisticated in some ways, but not as much in others. So, so how do you deactivate it? So then you would need to update your program first, first or as part of the process. <laughs> Um, okay, so this curriculum, the, the curriculum search, should I just do something dumb? No, there it is. The curriculum search information here is just your ability to search other programs. Before we had this, we would go on to like Modesto Junior College's website and see if we could find a copy of their course outline. Um, this way, it's all here if you ever need it. And some people have found it really useful. So I want to get back though and get you started in actually what you do if you want to build a, a course. We'll start with building a course. And so build is where you start. And build is where you start if you're developing a new course, if, you are develop, if you're modifying an existing course, if you're deactivating a course. <laughs> what you're really doing is building a document or building a data element, in essence. So you, you start with build, and we're going to build a course. And you click on course. And now it said, now so you can see that I have some courses in progress. Um, I am working on a new communication course. Um, I'm deactivating a technical writing course. Um, this was a testing one I worked on today to try to find a, solve a problem for someone else. So I'm working on some courses already. So if you've already started a course, don't, you don't go and search for it. You go into build courses and it's going to be right there. And you're going to be able to work on it. But if you haven't, you can go in and let's just everybody start a new course. Just, just for the, for the experience. So you go to new course. And now it says create a new course. And you're only going to be able to create a course in the disciplines that I've assigned you to. Um, I will just go ahead and use business. And uh, for the purpose of this test, use like a 999 number. Okay. If you're actually developing a brand new course, you should touch bases with your curriculum chair to get a number. But you can always start it with something like 999. Um, and then you put in the course title, and we'll just make one up. I'm just going to put testing course on for mine. But you can put whatever you want. Um, you can start a brand new course. You can start when you really want to start. <laughs> uh, um, like, I don't know, uh, swimming level 15. No, yeah, I know you can't do that anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, well, it's uh, your syllabus is eventually developed from this, but yeah, it, you can use your it, it interacts with your syllabus, or it could, yes. Then the catalog description is actually what's going to be in the catalog. And if you ever need samples, I'm going to give you the Lelaney website information on where you can get more information on how to write a better course description and that kind of thing. But um, you know, you can just put um, um, Spanish, whoops, Spanish. For intermediate, for for native speakers. So we already have a class called that, but whatever you want to put in there. And then the proposal type will be one of two things. If it's a new course, it'll be a new course or a new fee-based course. Now, if fee, you're not going to be creating fee-based courses, hardly ever. <laughs> Before you create a fee-based course, talk to your curriculum chair. These are non-credit community-based courses, and we're not doing that very much right now at Peralta. Some of you may already have some in your system, but. But mostly you're going to be creating new courses. That, so that's just create, and yours will say Laney new course, or, or College of Alameda new course. And then you just click OK. This is really not, it's pretty intuitive. Building a course is really intuitive. Building a program, not so much. <laughs> but we're not going to do that today. We want you to do the courses. So, question. Yes. So we're doing this for testing. Mm -hmm. At any point, I could change the course number from 999 to a specific Absolutely. So Absolutely. Yes. Um, or at some point you could delete it and say, I'm not going to use this course at all because it's a testing course. Now, when you've put in that initial information, you're going to get the main menu, construction menu. And um, it gives you some information over on the so left side. It says, oh, this is what you're calling it, and this is the person who's developing it. And then it gives you a nag. Remember to fill out all the requirements on the course checklist. <laughs> and so the course checklist is on the right-hand side. And so what you'll be doing to develop a course is to go through and fill out every one of those items. And so you start with the cover sheet. And so you just click on cover. And now you're going to see this is where you could change the course number at some point. Or change the course title if you didn't, decided you didn't like it. Or change the description. But then you also go on down a little farther and now you have to start putting in more information. And so you have to enter the justification for the course. And for a new course, you absolutely have to have a justification. And so um, you type in whatever it is. You always have to do a proposed start date. And so that isn't today. It's the semester that you think this is going to be approved for. So if we were starting to create a course today, we're not going to be able to have it approved for spring 2013. <laughs> Probably not even for summer 2013. So if you're starting fresh on a brand new course today, I would start with fall 2013. That's probably the earliest you're going to be able to get it in. And if you're doing updating of your courses, which I know a lot of you will be doing, and we'll be doing that in a second, you'll still put in a proposed start time, but it can be sooner. You could make it for spring 2013 or summer 2013, uh, because it'll go through the workflow in time for that, uh, for it to be a revised course. Not to be a new course, but for it to be a revised course. Um, most of you will be updating so that it's in the new catalog, so that it's part of your program reviews. Um, I would suggest you use summer 2013 because that's when the new catalog will be out. So that's just a recommendation. But you can use whatever you want or whatever your, your college has decided. So you, yes, go ahead. Cross oh, cross-listing up at the top. Thank you. I skipped that. This is if your course is being taught by two different disciplines. Um, so sometimes graphic arts is actually an example. Maybe you have a course that you have in graphic arts and it's also in yeah. CIS or media and it's exactly the same course and it has to be exactly the same. <laughs> it's not just similar. It has to be exactly the same. Um, but sometimes you list it as CIS and sometimes you list it as graphic arts, primarily depending on who you have to teach it that semester. But it has to be taught exactly the same. Um, so not very many courses get cross-listed, really, in reality. Um, when you start changing courses that you have more than one section of and more than one teacher? Um, then the, the course outline should be the same. Exactly. So like if Michael goes in and starts changing his Photoshop course outline, there is another teacher. But We're going you to have to get agreement is that do. when it comes to the department That's exactly chair. right. The department chair has to make sure both all the instructors are talking about it. And, as you know, Don, if it's a course that's very similar to what's being taught at another college, you also need to talk to them a little bit about it. Um, they can't, you know, okay, well, we've, we've sent a lot of multimedia courses. Okay. 
Because I know we've had some, when I was department chair or curriculum chair, we had, yeah. yeah. So it does, they don't have to be identical always, but you, you usually consult a little bit about it. Um, so after you put in the start date, most, 99% of the courses are not open entry, open exit. These are full term courses. That, so, so it's usually not open entry, open exit. If you think it might be, talk to your curriculum chair. If it's required for an existing certificate or you're developing a new certificate, you can put that in here. And then um, they're not modular, hardly ever. We don't do very many credit by exams, so that's why the defaults on these are no. Um, uh, if this is a college level course, then the assignments and the readings better be at college level. <laughs> that's just like pretty important. Um, the only reasons it wouldn't be if, if, if it was like um, the 200 level, no, the 250 level courses that we offer um, uh, are not, and those are mostly in English and math. Yes? Oh, it's because I clicked yes under required for degree. I'm sorry. When I clicked yes to required for degree, it opened up. No, no. I, I've worked with this so long that I do a lot of things automatically, so it's important for you to, to stop me. So once you fill this page out, always click save before you leave it. Now, if, you, if you're completely finished with this page and you know you're not going to have to go back to it, you can also go back after you've saved it and click finish. Now, if you'll know, and that just, you know, it, it uh, consolidates it, it shrinks it down so it's all in one view. And it also, if you'll notice over here on the course checklist side, change the color. And that means it's now finished. And you don't have to go back and look at that page again if you don't want to. But what if you said, oh, wait, I need, forgot to change it from 999. Then down at the bottom it says unlock. And you click unlock. And now you can go back in. It's changed back to blue. You can go and change whatever you want. And you can save and finish again. Yes, yes. And it's, it is so much easier. It's a thousand times easier. <laughs> Even when there's a problem with the system, it's still a thousand times easier. Uh, yes. Oh, it was at the bottom of the. Uh, you got it? Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So then, what I'd like you to do is uh, you go down, go to each of these items. Um, well, actually, I, we'll, we'll continue to go through. I wanted to get you set up so you could be practicing. Hang on for just a second. Look at some courses. Come over and let me set you set you up. <laughs> I'm gonna take a, a, a minute break here. You can go get a sandwich if you want. So let me see, where was I? Business 999 is the one I'm working on. So, oh, so here's something you need to know. So I logged out of my ID because I wanted to set up um, Irene. Um, now that I've gone back in, I went to build courses again. So let me see. I went back to build courses. And I want to still work on that same course that I was just showing you. So I go down to it. And in order to continue to work on it, I click the edit pencil. Okay, so I found it, Business 999. I click the Edit Pencil, and here I am back to where I was. Back to the course checklist. Okay, so I, we finished my cover sheet. We locked it up. Now under List of Changes, uh, if this is a brand new course, you just type New Course and save it and go on. But if it was a modified course, if you're updating an existing course, type all the fields that you're changing in here. You can put like General Update, Whoops. Update, of course. And then you can put textbooks. Whoops, I'm typing too fast. Textbooks, SLOs, whatever you've changed. So this helps the curriculum committee know that this is just a minor change. If you put in here course description, then they want to make sure that you're doing a uh, catalog change as opposed to just a minor change. Okay. So once again, you save it. And I'm not going to say it's finished. I'm going to go back. So, so I'm just going to go on to the next field, which is units and hours. So at some point, I can go back and finish the list of changes. Now, under variable units, if, again, if you're updating an existing course, this information is going to be filled out. And if you're not changing it, you can just finish the page. But if you're going to change it, you have to put in the number of units. So 
Most courses are not variable units, so I think some PE courses might be variable units, but art is. Some art courses have been in the past. Mostly it's going to be no. You're going to have three units. It's going to be three lecture hours, no lab in this case. Um, most courses in the world today are no longer repeatable. <laughs> so it'll stay zero. Um, if you're offer, uh, proposing an experimental course, um, that's what a selected topic means. It's an experimental course. This one has not, this is a new course I'm pr proposing that has never been offered as an experimental course. So I'm going to leave it no. Um, then I pick, what am I going to do for grades? Is it going to be letter grade only? Is it going to be pass, no pass only? Or am I going to give students the option? And that's up to you and your department chair. Um, there's really no rules about that, except that if most, most of your courses are intended for transfer to four-year schools, they like to see more grades than pass, no pass. So um, you, in some instances, we, don't, we, we decide not to give students the option. But that's your department's decision. Okay, oh, I didn't save it. Oh, it did save, though. <laughs> Sometimes if you forget to click save and click finish, it'll save, but you can't always rely on that. Now I go down to degree transfer. Um, it's going to mine is a part of a degree, and the GE transfer requirements are put in by your articulation officer. So you don't have to put anything in there. Okay, they determine what it is. But you do have to say that it's either degree or non-degree. Um, and you save and you finish, so I keep going. Lecture content, this is all typed information. I mean, this is just a text box. So this is your course content. If we, um, hmm. yes. Yes. <laughs> you can use copy and paste from something else. Um, the only problem you might run into is that sometimes if there's weird um, um, I, 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 symbols and things, yeah, yeah, that it, they don't copy over very well. So the way you can tell is if you put them in, I'm just going to type some information there, <laughs> and you save it. So that, um, and so if I've cut and pasted something that has a weird thing in it, if I go, at any time, you can go over here to this WR on the left and click Course Outline, and you can see what you've typed in so far. And you can see I just put my lecture content there. <laughs> and it would look weird. It would have those weird symbols yeah, if you had cut and pasted. So, yes. And so um, in order to correct that, usually you can uh, clear, clean up messy code with the HTML buttons. Oops. So sometimes you can fix it with some of these other buttons, and I'm not real good at that. So I don't have, it's, it's just really usually a matter of doing this and clicking clean up messy code, and it goes away. But not always. Sometimes you'll have to go in and redo it. So we could, we could work straight in HTML in there? Um, I think so. Yes, another question. Yeah, it's the post that I want to copy from somebody else. Yes. In this case, other than what you are seeing Oh, um, you, you won't be able to go to, um, You can't work on, oh, you could, no, see, the problem is <laughs> you can only be logged in in one screen for, for curriculum. But if you had found a course and you had put it into like a Word document or something, then you can just open a Word document. But you can't get it from another, yeah. Yeah. You would have to start, yeah, you can't use another tab. Um, you would have to start, look at that course first and download it, and then it could be in another tab. Yeah. Yeah. And then you could use it. Did you finally get in? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> All right, so once you've done this and you can type it, you know, in for course content at Peralta, we usually put like number one and let me think, what do, what do I have in some of my courses? Um, uh, international business is the first topic and the second topic is um, um, communications, I don't know. I don't even know which course I'm talking about here. But then we also have percentages. You know, this is 5% of the, whoops, 5% of the course, and this is 10% of the course. So, so like that, okay. And you can even put more details. So like um, um, under international business, I might also have uh, doing business in the European Union or something as part of international European Union, okay. something like that. I don't know. <laughs> I know a lot about this program, but I don't know about that. Word and you set it to outline. 
Yeah, I don't think I don't think it's a problem. You could try it. The other way that sometimes you can do is if, if, if you've really had a problem, you can then put in you can put it in a notepad and that cleans up the, the weird stuff. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna save this and we're gonna assume I finished it again. And the student performance objectives, now these are put in a little bit differently. It's you do type in this box, but you don't number them because it numbers them automatically. And so, um, I really should have, I didn't think about bringing a copy of my own, one of my courses to do this. Um, course, performance objective. The performance objectives, you want to make sure that you start them with an action, with a verb that you can measure. So, like, describe um, the advantages of doing business with the European Union. I don't know. <laughs> Um, so this course, so I put this in, uh, and that's my first performance objective. This is one of the first things that the student has to accomplish. Then you click Add. Don't put more than one in a box. You put this in. You click Add, and now it shows up down below, and it's numbered. And then you put the next one in, and you add it. Oh, oh I put two. Now it's going to have two twos. Wait a second. See, it's got two twos because I wrote two. So you don't number them, you, you, it'll number it for you. And then if I decide, oh, I, don't, I want to change the second one, you click the Edit Pencil, and I put that instead, and I save it, and now it's there. If I decide I want it to be the first one, I can click this little arrow button, and it goes, and it's suddenly the first one. <laughs> and if I decide, oh, that was stupid, I don't want it there at all, I can click the scissors, and that makes it go away. So it's really pretty intuitive, but you just have to kind of work through it. So I'm only going to have one. You usually have, I don't know how many you have, five or six usually, maybe, more, sometimes many more. Yeah, depends on your course. The student learning outcomes, you know about that. This one is also put in one at a time. Uh, in this one, you put the outcome text, whatever it may be. You check your institutional outcomes. Yours may be different than Berkeley's, but that, okay, this outcome matches the communication institutional, and we're going to evaluate that by essays. So we add it, and again, it shows at the bottom, and you can edit or cut it out or move it up or down, and then you put in the next one. And make this one this, and add, and there you go. And if you want to see, yes? Sorry. No, sorry. Ah, so Lainey may have done them differently. Neither do I. Okay, then Lainey has it differently. Okay. okay. So um, we added them into our curriculum. So you, uh, th I would just fill out the blanks that are there. Or check with Amy to see. Uh, probably she's just using TaskStream then, maybe. Okay. Maybe they're just using TaskStream. Um, we found it was nice to have it all in one place. <laughs> um, and then again, if you wanted to see what those SLOs look like, if you go over to the WR, you can see not only can you see the course outline, you could look at the SLO report, and voila, that's what they look like. So, I, how did I get that? Over on the right-hand side, oh, yeah, way over on the right-hand side, this WR button, if you put your, uh, your cursor over the WR, then, and you hold down your, you have to hold it down, then these come up and you pick the SLO report, yeah, and it opens. That. You don't have that in your menu. Oh, the SLO report? Mm -hmm. uh, because there are none in it, probably. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's none in there. It's a brand new course. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> so now I finished that one. Methods of instruction is pretty simple. You just check the boxes of what methods you're using. You can also add other methods at the bottom. Uh, if there's something that you use that isn't there, you know, most of the time in my classes we use discussion, we use uh, lecture, multimedia, projects. What is taxonomy? Oh, the, the Bloom's taxonomy on the other page. Uh, oh, wait, what was that? That was under performance objectives, huh? It's SLOs. Oh, it's under SLOs in yours. Okay, maybe. 
Okay. Uh, it is it's all under links on the left-hand side, too. Bloom's taxonomy, if you, you can click on that at any point, and it's the sample verbs to use oh. <laughs> for your performance objectives and your SLOs. Oh. Um, very Great. nice to have. Great. And, yeah. yeah. Okay, Bloom's taxonomy. Say it again. Um, it's on some of these links. Um, we don't have them all in Berkeley, but it's always on the left-hand side at the bottom where it says links. You can always go to Bloom's Taxonomy there. And you can also link to assist from here if you really wanted to. So methods of instruction. Well, oh, one other thing about methods of instruction. I guess I didn't save it. Whoops. Is that if you, uh, if you look right here for a second. Whoops, where is it? It's right in front of it. Um, these are great. This is great for distance education. If you're not going to have this course available via distance education, so hybrid or Moodle or online 100%, um, that's going to stay that way. The way to turn it into a distance ed to allow you to request that is to click under methods of instruction, which is where we are, distance education, and then when you save that page, this came up. And now I can enter information in there if I decide to make it a distance education course. And so distance education, um, you fill this form out. It asks you, is it a 100% enter-based course, a 51% or more, or less than 51%. You can click all three if you're going to offer it many ways. If it's a course like um, uh, my business communications course, I would never offer it. I know other colleges do, but I would never offer it 100% online because I have my students do oral presentations. So I would never, I would, if I were going to offer it online, I would make it 51% or more online <laughs> because then they could do all the writing for business communications online and I would have them come in for like two class meetings to do, uh, to do oral presentations. Um, the maximum enrollment is usually, it depends whatever your maximum enrollment is for this class. Uh, 40, yeah, I, I would encourage you not to do more than 40, especially for online courses, okay, because they're really a lot of work. Then again, you type in your need and your justification. Um, the, your course outline of records should be the same in these three areas for online and not online. So we used to, so you should add, so the performance objective should be the same because it should be the same course. The assignments, if they're not the same, like maybe they're more written assignments and, and, less, um, and less oral assignments, then that can be no. The assessment process um, is probably going to be pretty much the same with exams and, and written assignments. But if it's no, then you have to explain here why. The assignments might be different, um, you know, more writing, uh, less discussion. I don't know, something like that. Project-based. Project-based. Yeah, whatever you want. Technical issues, um, we at Berkeley have a, uh, have a uh, boilerplate that we put in here. I don't think the other colleges did that, but ours sa it says things like, um, for an online course, we have to have Moodle if you're using Blackboard. Um, and also, if the, if the system goes down, the instructor will use email and telephones to contact stu the students or you know, whatever. So that's, you just answer those two questions to the best of your ability. Um, will this course accommodate students with disabilities? It should. If it can't, you're going to be in big trouble because we have to have everything uh, accessible. <sighs> um, I'm sure there are some excuses in playing football or something like that. But you wouldn't have an online football course anyway. So, um, so if it isn't, you have to explain it not only here, but you're going to have to explain it to the curriculum committee and, and, and uh, assure them that, um, that, it's, that it's a valid course even if it isn't accessible. I don't think they're going to have as much problem as the uh, state of California if you try to develop a course that isn't accessible to people with disabilities. Are additional resources needed? Yes or no? If yes, you know, maybe, maybe you're developing a graphic arts course that's going to be in a big lab and you need, you always have to have a t teaching assistant in that lab. That, but it's, it's an online course, so maybe not. <laughs> um, or maybe, you know. Well, actually, I was thinking so. Accessibility related to graphic arts that would be an issue. It, it, it could be. Um, with programs that, that, that you need to have social visual. programs. And visual, yeah. 
So you may not end up being, it may be more of a, you may not decide to make it a distance ed. Keep in mind, and I should emphasize that, this page is the distance ed page. You only have to fill this out if it's going to be online or partially online. If you're not going to be doing 100% face-to-face, ooh, it's 1 o'clock, I better move through this a little more quickly, <laughs> if it's going to be 100% face-to-face. Um, so in the end, what you do uh, with any course that you're updating, I'm going to go through and just click all these to finish them because I want to show you what happens when you're finished, and then I'll do a real quick how to update a course because it's not that much different. Um, come on, finish. Oh, I didn't save any of that. Yeah. One of the things it tells you is if you didn't fill something out, <sighs> did that wrong. So I didn't save the page I was working on. Save, finish. Because I, I have to show you this last piece because otherwise, <sighs> uh, assignments. One other thing about the course assignments, it's going to give you an automatic number. This outside class hours is based on Title V requirements. If you have, for every lecture hour, you have to have two hours of outside homework. So this is a three lecture course, three hour lecture course, and it automatically puts in six. You should look at it though, because once in a weird while, it gives you the wrong amount. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's that, I'm, and I'm not sure why, but it has done that in the past. And then, yeah, some weird bug that doesn't always come out to play. Uh, the student assessment, this is, are you going to be doing essays, multiple choice, other, you describe it, save, finish. Uh, requisites, um, this course doesn't have any prerequisites. Content review is about prerequisites as well. You'll want to work with your curriculum chair or somebody else when it comes to that. And the text and readings are really important. You need to, to add textbooks. This is kind of like the, some of those other fields. It gives you everything you need. You type it in. And this, you won't have to fill anything out. This is admin only. Then you add it, and there it is. But it did say I needed a four-digit year. <laughs> um, so you fill it out. You fix it. And there I have my first textbook. And it will, if I want to edit it, again, if I didn't like it, I can delete it. Um, you can also add manuals, periodicals, software, anything else. Like if, um, no, there's no biology in here. Sometimes they have readers. Or you, sometimes you may have a reader. Or in biology, they have lab notebooks, I think. <laughs> um, those kinds of things you could add under other. And then you finish that, the library. You should make your best guess, uh, or, or do you have library in Laney? Do you have a yeah, library pane? Okay. No, I mean on the field. I know you have a library. Um, you know, put, if you want to make comments that, you know, uh, El, um, Evelyn should buy more books about graphic arts, <laughs> uh, you put it in, you save it, you finish it. Um, you, will, the, you will attach files in very, very rare cases. Um, something that you want to have in the system. Say it again. Um, you could. You could attach information about for the student. Um, um, you could, but this is all. The student's not going to see this. This is the only the people are going to see this are people who have access to the course outline, um, and it's uploading things. I actually I teach work experience as well, and in Coped work experience, I have a uh, an application form that is required as part of the process, that's something I uploaded to this. So that people, if anybody besides me wants to teach the course and they look up the outline, they'll also see that there is a form that the students have to fill out to be part of that class. Yeah. Yeah. And so now that's finished. Now you'll notice, and this is really important, all of these green buttons, they're all green now. If I go back and unlock one, it turns blue. And there's nothing over on the, this side over here under remember to fill out. There's nothing there. But if I make this one finished again, it says you may now submit your course. But you have to have all those course check, items checked and finished. And then you get the button and you can click submit and it will go into the workflow to whoever's next in your workflow. So just to, I, I'm sorry I'm keeping you just a couple minutes late. I just want to show you the, 
the, the thing that a lot of you are going to be doing. It's very similar, but how to get there. If you go to build, we're back to the main home now. If you go to build courses, one more time. Now we want to modify a course. And you pick your, whatever course you want to modify. So let's see, what's the next course I have to modify for myself? Um, updating business five. And you don't ever have to put in the course title if you have the number. In fact, it's safer not to <laughs> because you might not get it exact. So this is my human relations course in business. You can see it hasn't been updated since fall 2008. I need to update it. So now I'm in build course. I went into modify course. I have this copy icon again. I click the copy icon. And now I have a proposal type. And you're going to get all these choices. And since I'm BCC, I want to pick one that says BCC. I'm not going to be changing any of the catalog information. So I don't want that one. I want BCC course changes only in non-catalog information, because all I'm doing is updating the textbooks and maybe the SLOs. You pick your college. Make sure you pick your college. Otherwise, you get in big trouble. <laughs> it hopefully won't even let you go on without it. But we did have a problem with it last year when we were doing ESL classes. Now I have that same menu again. Only if I go into, for instance, student performance objectives and I move down a little bit, the existing ones are there. And this is how you're going to modify. So if I want to modify, I click the edit button. If I say, oh, this one's not relevant anymore, I click the, the, the delete. And when I'm finished, again, I click finish, and now, voila, it's there. Um, if you go into the cover page, again, the course description, the justification, all of that's going to be there. You don't really have to touch that. The new proposed start date in this is going to be fall 2013. Um, it is required for a degree. I'm going to, ah, it is there. Let me know. Uh, save. I'm going to have to go back and redo this anyway. Um, now I can finish it. I have the new date. Yeah, fall 2013. And so I can, again, go through all of them. Um, the lecture content, this is what it looks like when you actually have it in here. The I'm going to have to make this much more detailed. <laughs> um, but that, you know, it has the percentages, just as I suggested before. The textbooks show here. And if I want to say, I go, oh, I know, you know what? The Chinjo's book is, oh, that, that's way too old. You should try to keep your textbooks five years or newer, or no more than five years old especially if it's a transfer level course because the UCs and the CSUs go five years, too old a textbook. Yes? Question. When you said you need to change the percentages on that last Yes, one. yes. Did you put tabs in between the... Uh, good question. I'm space? not sure. I think I spaced it out. Okay. You could also put it at the beginning and say 5% right. and do it that way. Mm -hmm. That's probably better even because it lines it up. I'm just wondering about yeah. that. Yeah, about then. Yeah. Sometimes it does. You incorrectly put, like, you know, uh, non-catalog or catalog or whatever. Ah, bachelor uh, cover sheet. Um, you will have to uh, call Lame Amy, call your curriculum chair, and she can fix it for you as long as you haven't submitted it. All right. Yeah. And so it's easy. It's an easy fix for her. All she has to do is log on and change one item. But it's, it's restricted. You can't go back in and change it at that point. I mean, you could delete it and start again, but it's just as easy for her. Because if you've gone through and you've filled out a bunch of them and realized it's going to be bigger than that, it's easier for her just to switch it over. And this saves so much time compared to the old printed outlines if you've been here for any length of time. Um, and so once you've, this is the update one, you know, I'm working on the one to, to update my course. Once you've got them all finished and, you, and the submit button will appear magically, <laughs> And then once you submit it, it goes to the, whatever the next level is. I think at Laney, the next level is the SLO coordinator, um, and then to the department chair. Um, at, at Berkeley, it goes immediately to the department chair. We don't figure the department chair uh, that we figure the department chair should have, you know, be under, be aware that people are doing work, and um, and that's just the way we set it up. So, a question about the SLOs: Are they entered through here or cast? In uh, we're at Berkeley, we're entering them in both. I'm assuming you need to enter them in both at Laney and at the other colleges right now. At some point, we want the two systems to talk to each other. <laughs> but since it isn't, <laughs> um, 
We are requiring both at, at Berkeley. Uh, do you have a question? If you know if all the colleges are using these, like uh, maybe contact of the college? Uh, 70 of the colleges are. I don't know which ones. Uh, 70 of the community colleges are. Okay. Not everybody, but 70 of them are right now. Yeah. And, I, and Curriculum is happy about that. They want all of them. And, our, and the state chancellor's office is using curriculum so that when we develop new programs and we used to have to do all this we have to send we used to have to send them three paper copies of every course outline and, and the whole program it was really a hassle um, now it's all done through curriculum so that makes a big difference mm -hmm.